Stand at the watch post, station yourself on the rampart, keep watch to see what the Lord will say to you. Amen. This is a moment in the fall, kind of late September, early October, uh, the fall breaks beginning, and that notwithstanding where there seems to be so much uh, afoot that might even bear comment uh, from, from the pulpit. There's the, there's the Feast of Francis this evening and the Blessing of the Animals that will kick off at 6. There was yesterday's amazing Nashville Cares AIDS walk, the community, uh, Nashville-wide community raised $250,000 for Nashville Cares, and, and Christ Church was the third among the institutions who walked. Very, very great day for that, for that work. Uh, we could note the beginning of our, of our campaign, our Every Member Canvas for the coming year, the program year. We could look at announcements about newcomers and journey in faith, those seeking baptism and confirmation coming into our life. A little more could be said about pilgrimages, Haiti, Holy Land, Bolivia. But then there are the scripture lessons. Yeah, we need to say, we need to say something about the scripture lessons today. If you had faith like a mustard seed, you could say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted, planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Having the faith that moves mulberry trees seen by some as essential, if you're going to do big things, or even simply have assurance that you're on the right path. The faith that moves mulberry trees. You, you've learned this in other places, at least some iterations of this. You can do it. If, if you just wish hard enough, says the child, then your dream might come true. If you can only be good enough, then maybe St. Nicholas won't put sticks in coal and stockings in the next year. If you could work harder, says the laborer, then maybe your boss would recognize your efforts and promote you. If I were a little more faithful, then, then maybe God would. And here, here you could fill in the blank, the petition of your life in this moment. The variety of European and North American fairy tales all seem to suggest that if we only had a deeper sense of self, one which realized our full potential for faith, for self-giving, for self-sacrifice, self-love and self-esteem, then the world would be a better place. We could be all we were meant to be and more. We could eliminate hunger, see the UN Millennium Development Goals for more here. We could bring about world peace. We could beat poverty. I mean, you can't, you can't get 25 pages into any work of the 19th and 20th century utopian science fiction without enduring some reference to the barbarism of the present day and the need for humanity to evolve beyond it if they're to survive. Needless to say, such notions, the gospel notwithstanding, have permeated popular Christianity as well. Churches along the way, perhaps no church in your life, but churches along the way in the name of Jesus have promised the faithful happiness and spiritual peace in exchange for your renewed efforts to develop a stronger faith. Churches along the way have promised you health in exchange for increased faith. See Christian scientists and, well, snake handlers for more on this. I've had some Christian scientists along the way who were friends. A, a tough religion, Mary Baker Eddy, beginning of the 20th century, who among other things espoused the notion that when you were sick, your faith would make you well. No need to avail yourself of the medical community. And then snake handlers. I have to say this. <laughs> it's actually, it's taken preaching the sermon all morning for this memory to come back. But I remember the lure of visiting, that is, seminarians, fellow seminarians trying to get others to go to a snake handling church in the country in North Carolina. I had forgotten this completely, but snake handlers, yes, in the extreme, George Went Hensley, he's the one that can give us more on this. In those very few Appalachian churches starting in Birchwood, Tennessee, 1910, you would be taught that you would not die from a snake bite 
in worship if your faith was strong enough. Now, I won't ask how many of you ever visited churches where snakes were handled. I've admitted the, the lure among seminarians at one point in my life. It was, after all, Robin Williams who once quipped that one of the great things about being an Episcopalian was that you didn't have to handle snakes. <laughs> but this particular holiness movement, it thrived in the Carolinas, in Tennessee, in Kentucky, Virginia, Ohio, and Indiana and taught, following a misapplication of a verse in the Gospel of Mark, that if a rattlesnake bit you while at worship, you wouldn't die if you had sufficient faith. I've never been in an assembly where snakes were handled. That's not hard to admit to this group. I've never been in an assembly, but I have, in preparation for this sermon, peeked at such an assembly on YouTube And there you will find preachers doing the Holy Spirit two-step with hands full of rattlesnakes. I mean, my goodness. I imagine this, this could be a thrilling test of your faith. Adrenaline, quickened heartbeats, sweaty brow, and confirmation at the end of it that indeed you had enough faith. Well, until you didn't. And one of the founders, Reverend Hensley, died in 1955, snake bit while at worship. More faith. I, I want more faith. I need more faith. I, I crave it. Some faith. The disciples come to Jesus frustrated by his teaching on forgiveness that required them to forgive the offender 70 times 7. And they demand that Jesus somehow increase their faith. We might reasonably assume that the saying on the mustard seed that follows boasts of a faith once perfected that can do anything. We might with sufficient faith be able to save the world in the name of Jesus. We might with sufficient faith be able to save the church, renew our parish, reform the city, all in the name of Jesus. We might with sufficient faith be able at least to save ourselves. And thus, when standing before God at the great white throne, earn that much hope for pat on the back, well done, good and faithful servant. And in the meantime, God might get sufficiently anxious to go ahead and provide me with that new job I've been looking for, or a new set of lungs, or a new suit, or a new place to live, or another priest on staff. Remember, this is the faith that dares to move mulberry trees. It's as if we might dare to settle accounts with God, as if we might dare to hold God to his end of the bargain. But don't you see, says Jesus, the master whose servant is coming in from the field is not going to ask the servant to sit at table and share what has yet to be prepared. No, instead, the master is going to direct the servants to make supper. Moreover, There'll be no particular thanks for the job well done. It's the work put before you, says Jesus. It's the work put before you, that's the key. The disciples ask for more faith. Jesus says, go stand at the watch post. Go do what has been put before you. Go make supper, go make dinner, go wash the dishes. It's true, now we see through a glass dimly then we will see him face to face. But our faith now comes by way of doing what is set before us, running the race, taking our place at the watchtower. We, we are each commissioned to be children of light into a dark world. Yours is to be transparent to that light, to be faithful to your baptism. The parable of the mustard seed, it refuses to allow notions that would affirm degrees of spiritual prowess. It's the smallest seed, the most insignificant, perhaps even the least spiritually mature, which are used to move mulberry trees. So I say, do not resent God when things fall apart, 
when your dreams are dashed and your hopes begin to fade. These securities were never promised you as members of his body. Similarly, do not harbor guilt that your faith was insufficient when the trials of life seem to visit you without end. The inadequacy of our faith has already been established, acknowledged, redeemed on the cross. Instead, commit yourself afresh to the task at hand, the work of being a Christian. Above all, place the Lord Jesus Christ at the head of your life. Glorify Him in your daily walk. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Guard the good promise entrusted to you. Give liberally, lavishly, without attention to your own well-being. Station yourself at the rampart. Do what's set before you. The gift of faith comes not in the frequency or, or fervor of mantras repeated. It comes not in the deep silence honored. It comes not in the ardent wish that all might be well. Faith rather comes in the doing of the gospel, in the doing of the summary of the law, and in the tithe of heart and treasure. In the end, Jesus requires of us a love that recognizes its duty, its work, its charge is never completed. So when you ask yourself, or when you find yourself ready to ask, where's my faith? How much can I have? Lord, even increase my faith. Remember this question was asked once before. Do what is set before you. Stand at the watch post. Pick up the baton. Run the race. Make dinner. Make summer, supper. Go wash the dishes. That's the response that came before. Go wash the dishes. said these things to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.